Hello everyone, I am Renown Zero, and today we're going to be talking about Marvel Spider-Man 2 developer Insomnia Games' response to accusations that the first game was pro-police propaganda. Obviously, that wasn't our intent. First of all, if anybody knows anything about Spider-Man, he literally always helps the police catch bad guys. That is his MO. That's literally the type of character that he is. And this is why I don't support Insomniac. Because you keep bending the knee to weirdos on Twitter over nonsense. That they don't know shit about Spider-Man as a character. This is exactly why I didn't buy any of your Spider-Man games when it came out on PS uh, on PC. And this is exactly why I will not buy Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart when it comes out on PC. Because y'all always seem to bend the knee to weirdos when it comes to your Spider-Man games. Five years ago, the Terminally Online took issue... With what they perceived as an overtly pro-police sentiment inherent in Insomnia Games and Sony Marvel's with Spider-Man. From Deadspin to Game Revolution to Dot Esports, various media activists in 2018 were beside themselves with outrage over the fact that during a time of rising division over the concept of American law enforcement, the game dared to show the titular web-slinger forming a positive working relationship with the New York City Police Department. Quote, police are an unimpeach unimpeachable group in Spider-Man, opined Kotaku's Heather Alexandra. They show no real flaws and make no mistakes. They don't feel like an integrated part of the community. They pepper cutscenes and sometimes walk the streets, but mostly show up as an allied faction in procedurally generated crime events. Even as Spider-Man's New York is largely a fiction, it points towards a real place. New York is many things, but it is also the city of Eric Garner, Stop and Frisk, and Palantir, who gives a shit. Rikers isn't some fake pastiche location like Arkham Asylum. Real life police are a complicated presence in New York, but in Spider-Man they're part of Spider-Man's vigilante quest for justice rather than members of the communities they're supposed to protect. Spider-Man has always helped the police. Tell me you don't know anything about Spider-Man as a character without telling me you don't know anything about Spider-Man as a character. Further, many also took issue with the game's central discovery mechanic, wherein players would repair NYPD communication surveillance towers in order to expand their in-game world map, as they felt they too flippantly ignored the civil liberties issues such technology presented when employed in the real world. Who cares? Quote, to reveal portions of the game's map, players must bound across Manhattan and repair the dozens of surveillance towers that Oscorp Industries, a devious conglomerate, has installed to serve the NYPD, explained the ringer's Justin Charity. By the way, games media as a whole is garbage, they're trash, and I hope they go the way of the dodo. In fact, the towers resemble surveillance equipment that the NYPD now uses in real life to sort suspects and other people by interest of interest by physical tags including skin color based on closed circuit footage. Spider-Man does occasionally hint at the potential for civil rights abuses. It's Oscorp technology after all, but the game has rendered ubiquitous surveillance stations and drones as an otherwise benign, irresistible fact of modern life in a big crime-ridden city. And despite the fact that many of these complaints seem to be based on the fact that its players were unable to separate fiction from reality and thus saw the game's d disinclination to tackle an admittedly complicated and sensitive political topic in favor of delivering a piece of escapist entertainment as an endorsement of every negative action performed by law enforcement in recent years. This claim that Marvel Spider-Man was copaganda became an accepted narrative among critics. Yeah, because game critics are shit. That's why people go to YouTube to find out about video games. They don't go to shitty games media because all they do is talk a bunch of bullshit and don't actually review the game for what it is. They always got to put their political spin on their reviews because that's what they are now. They're a bunch of activists. They're not real gamers. These are the same gamers, games journalists that want an easy mode in Dark Souls games, in Elden Ring, in Sekiro. So much so that Eurogamer's Victoria Kennedy felt the need to raise the topic to Insomnia Games during a recent discussion with the developer regarding the wall crawler's upcoming sequel. Reflecting to Kennedy on the pro-police accusations following the reveal of the sequel's latest trailer at Sony's May 24th PlayStation Showcase, by the way it was garbage, Marvel Spider-Man 2 creative director Brian Intihar asserted, you, obviously, you know obviously that wasn't our intent, because of course bend the knee to woke activists. I think just going forward we think about things. In terms of the surveillance tower criticisms, Inantar revealed that Insomnia Games had changed the map discovery mechanic noting its objective points are not in tower, not towers in this next game, so you bent the knee and that's why your games fucking suck. 
a PlayStation 5 exclusive for however long that may last. The Sony Symbiote Soak Marvel Spider-Man 2 is set to be released in fall of 2023. That's why you bitches still don't have a release date for this mid-ass game. Y'all motherfuckers, y'all motherfuckers on PlayStation act like you've never played a Spider-Man game in your entire life. Like, there haven't been like 12 plus Spider-Man games ever. And this game looks mid as fuck. So, again, games journalists, tell me you don't know shit about Spider-Man without telling me you don't know shit about Spider-Man. Because clearly you don't know who Spider-Man is as a character. You decide to critique this game and be a propaganda wing for gaming, for people who game. And this is why no one gives a shit about your opinions. No one gives a shit about going to websites for opinions on these games. They rather go to YouTube and they because they get genuine people, actual real gamers who play these games and review them, rather than being a bunch of propagandist pieces of shit activists. And that's why y'all will eventually go the way of the dodo. Thank you all for checking out this video. I really do appreciate all the new subscribers, returning subscribers, new viewers, returning viewers. Hoping to hit monetization by the end of this year. If you do like this video, hit that like button. Comment below what you feel about all this. Subscribe for more content. Hit the bell for notifications. Set the bell to all. That way you get notifications anytime I post a new video. And I will see you all on the next one. Peace.